Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back. Here we are for another episode of the Ask Kalefi podcast. How are we doing, Dan? We're doing good. Well, welcome back, everybody. Yeah, it's been a hot minute, um, yeah. but we're back here recording a few more. Yeah, yeah, we're excited about that. So thanks for coming back. Yeah. So what we're going to do today, and we're going to continue to do this going forward every so often. Is yeah, I think we'll slot these in now and then. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to pull some questions from the Ask Kalefi blog. And for some of you that don't know about the blog, if you head to our website, click on Ask Kalefi, and it'll drop down and show you the Ask Kalefi blog. And there's a bunch of different topics, you know, ranging from plumbing to heating to... Oh, there's a ton of different yeah, topics there, on there's there. There's a lot. So a lot of good information, a lot of good questions. And some of these are very commonly asked questions that we're always answering either over the phone or through email. Yeah, I mean, it's made up of questions that we've, you know, were popular questions that we got a lot that we went on to the Ask Cleffy blog and created blog posts about, and also made up of questions that were posted on there from from contractors, engineers, homeowners, people out out in yeah. the industry. Yeah, they read the blog and and they'll they'll ask a question. Yeah, and we we get a lot of questions coming in even yet, you know, maybe one or two a week on that blog, so there's always new content being added. Absolutely. So, go check it out if you have time. Um if not, continue to listen in here. We're going to give it to you one way or another. Yeah, so we just thought, you know what? Greg is right. We Thought, you know what, we'll each grab a couple questions from the blog and just kind of give you a, an example of what you'll find on there. And then you guys can go back there and help add content and ask questions there. Yeah. So today we're going to talk heating, just heating. And uh, the next one, we'll, we'll talk some plumbing questions. Right. Yeah, good. So I'll, I'll kick it off. Yeah, great. Uh, I think one of the most common questions we get with the dirt separators is, can I mount an air vent on top of your dirt separators? And quite honestly, if it has a port where there's a plug or a standoff of a piece of pipe, you absolutely can add an air vent to it, which is a great idea because it has a coalescing mesh in it, and it's going to grab that entrained air out of the solution as it moves through. Yeah, if you look at our, our dirt separators... You know, they essentially look like our air vents upside down, and and they really kind of are because right. the the ports on a dirt separator, you know, your entering and leaving ports are at the top section of the body, which gives the bottom section the, the space for that dirt to fall, and then we have an access point on the top, you know, where you can add an air vent to it. Certainly, yeah, it has a similar coalescing mesh, performs a similar function, so certainly that's a, a great spot to add an air separator. Sure, or an air vent. Air Sorry. vent because you're making it that now right. an air dirt separator. Correct. <laughs> we got we to be very clear about that. <laughs> Want to be clear how I say that? That's right. What do you got there? Uh, so one question I get a lot, and it's been a popular question on the blog post, um, is how do I determine head loss in a hydraulic separator? That is a very common question. We don't get it too often from contractors or homeowners looking to install it more from engineers engineers right they, they want to know exactly what the head loss is well we can tell you it's minimal yeah it's it, very minimal but, but there is a mathematic calculation yeah to there out. is and actually that mathematical calculation that formula is listed on the ask cluffy blog so you'll be able to go on and find that um, but greg's right it's negligible um what you'll find is that you know because the body is you know three times larger than the connection size, you have that instant velocity drop. So the velocity in the body of an air separator is one ninth the velocity of the pipe connecting to it. Beautiful. Um, so because of that, you know you'll get even transfer across. You don't get a you don't get a pressure drop. You know that would account for both our hydraulic separator and our set four. Right. The four and one. Yes. So for you engineers that you know want to know or contractors listening that actually want to learn how to calculate it, the formula is on the Ask Cleffy blog. You can go there and find that. And we also link it to, I believe it is Hydronics number 12. Yep. It has, there's actually two different calculations. Actually, it's Hydronics 16. Is it 16? Yep. Jeez. It's Hydronics issue 16. Okay. So it's in there and it tells you there's two different calculations if you're using rough iron pipe 
the larger flange right. type stuff usually, or smooth copper. Copper. So right. there are two different calculations. So if you got questions about it, you want to know how to f- find out that information. Give us a call, shoot us an email. We're happy to help you out yeah, with it. Or jump into that Idronics or Ask Laffy post. You got it. Well, on to the next question. Uh, another one that we commonly get because we are a company that has so many different fittings. <laughs> uh, we get this a lot with zone valves. Can I get your zone valve? Usually the Z2 or Z3 series is what they're referring to. Can I get your zone valve with a sweat connection on one end and an NPT on the other? Or we'll get it where it's sweat and barb or something. They'll they'll right. want a combination of fittings. Yeah, or packs on one side and sweat on the other. Yeah, sure. And essentially, yes, you can. Um, the Z2 and Z3 bodies, you can order what's called a, a one-inch male union. They have straight threads, and they use that, that our ever-so-famous one-inch male union yep. thread on them with a ceiling washer and a union nut. You can go to press. You can do a lot of different things with it. Um, we always have people want to do that and yes we can do it but you really need a combination of different part numbers like we don't offer it in the catalog yeah you can't there's no way way to jump into the catalog and order it that way um you will need to order the body and then go to section eight of our catalog has a lot of the fitting combinations yep so you'd have to go to section eight and look at that one inch uh, union connection and that's going to be all your different connection type from mpt sweat press pex pex expansion pex crimp yeah and and in section eight we actually offer these as fitting kits so that'll include the tailpiece the union nut and the ceiling washer. So it's a bag of three parts. You order that one all for one part number Mm -hmm. and you know, you'll need two, two of whatever kit you want to get or one of every, you know, one, one kit of each kind or whatever, but it's, it's very possible and it makes things a lot easier for you guys in the field to mix and match. Right. Yeah. So maybe you want to come off of a header and, you know, three quarter inch copper, but then have pecs attached to the other side, you know, order your, Order your sweat or press, you know, copper connection, yep. and then order your PEX outlet connection. Everything will come complete. Assemble it on site. Pick your actuator that works for your application. Yep. Add that to it, and you're set. And yeah. if you need a hand selecting those fittings and make want to make sure you get the correct parts and pieces, give us a call, and we'll help you put together that project list. Yeah, we're happy to do it. We do it all the time. What else you got? Boy, so another one I get a lot is... How do I clean an air separator vent? We're commonly talking people through that because yeah. they they don't their distributor doesn't have the replacement cover and float, right? Or they look at it and go, "Boy, it's really not that old." I'm or sure. a tech's on site, and you know yeah. what? They don't have a replacement cover and float. The thing's leaking. They don't want to just tighten the cap down, take it out of service, and come back at a later date. Right? You know, pull it apart, clean it out. You know, yeah. Drop the pressure, isolate it. Drop the pressure in your system. You can spin that cover off, pull the float out, clean the linkage behind it. You can get in if there's any debris in that air vent assembly at the top. You can clean that out. Right. I mean, heck, you could go one step further and take the body apart and clean the the coalescing mesh if you really wanted to. to. Yeah, if you're down that far and you you want to see what's going on inside the system, why not? If you got that much dirt up above, you got to wonder what's below. But I commonly describe that mechanism, that cover and float, as like a needle seat and float in a carburetor. So you got that float attached to the linkage and it moves that needle valve up and down and that needle valve at the tip of it is it's a pinch point right it's got a rubber seal on it so when it when it pushes up it closes Mm -hmm. well if you got a dirty system with a lot of dirt and debris that's where you're going to want to be able to take that thing apart and clean it and it's really not that difficult what can be difficult is if it's it's really corroded then you're trying to scrape around and yeah, at or, that point, you might want to just jump in and at, and order a replacement cap and yeah, float. Yeah, that's that's honestly the best fix for it. Yeah, but you know, certainly get that question a lot, and I know there's been a lot of comments on that on on site. Yeah, you know, one thing I'll mention too, when you look on our Ask Cleffy blog, under a lot of these, we have a video showing how to do it. So I think I believe with this, you know, how do I clean the air separator uh, vent? I believe there's actually a video showing how to disassemble it. So if you're online or on your phone and you can get YouTube. on that Ask Cluffy blog, you'll be able to pull that video up and see it taken apart right there. Yeah. And if not, give us a call and ask us. We're happy to talk you through it. Well, I think that's going to do it for this one. Uh, tune in next time. Uh, we're probably going to 
see more of this type of content coming down the, the pipe here. So yeah, I know we'll come back with another one on plumbing questions. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.